to central London. I'm joined by Matt Becker, Chief Engineer at Aston Martin. Now normally, when I bring you such uh, significant and special cars, uh, I have been briefed weeks in advance with lots of stats and figures and press packs about this thick, about what I'm about to film. But today I've had two days notice. Uh, it was a very nice, kind invitation to come and see this car incredibly early. This is the new Aston Martin DBS. The significance for me is that the DBS is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, so for you guys to be replacing that, and I guess this is also the successor to the Vanquish? Yes, it's the successor to the Vanquish, but we haven't yeah. called it the Vanquish, we've okay. called it the DBS. Cool. Big deal. Now, as I mentioned, I am not entirely au fait with this car, so what I'm going to do is point at things and ask Matt <laughs> to explain what's what. But first of all, because you're predominantly in the engineering side of things, let's start with the engine upgrades. Yeah, so um, so the base engine is the same as the DB11. So so the base hardware is the same, the yeah. turbochargers, all the pistons, com rods, the whole engine is the same. Okay. Fundamentally, what we've done is increased the boost pressure by around 0.3 of a bar. In terms of engine performance, this engine has 725 PS, so 715 horsepower. Okay. It has 900 newton meters of torque from 1800 RPM. So if you compare that to the DB11, DB11 is 600 horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque. So it was a vast increase in performance, in yeah. engine performance. So with that torque, we were briefly speaking earlier, you've also had to make gearbox adjustments and upgrades. What's happened there? So basically the DB11 gearbox has a limit of around 700 newton meters of torque. Okay. So to be able to release all this engine potential, this power potential, we've had to change the gearbox to the latest generation of ZF, um, ZF HP95 gearbox. That has a torque limit of beyond 900 newton meters of okay. torque. So you can't just fit the engine, turn the boost pressure up, give more uh, power, more torque, and expect the gearbox to live with that. You have to change the new to a new gearbox. All oh, right, and so so now it's running 900 newton meters of torque. Yeah, and the clear thing about that is 900 newton meters from 1800 RPM. So from 1800 yeah. to 5000 RPM, uh -huh. it, it delivers 900 newton meters of wow. torque. So basically, off the bat, then you've got a vast amount of twisting effort. Uh, exactly, yeah, you've got a lot, yeah. lot, lot of torque Huge. that you have to try and manage, and you have to manage that through some of the sus suspension oh, items as well. Okay, we're well, talking of suspension, I assume there's upgrades there? Yeah, so we're talking about sort of front to back, I mean, uh -huh. um, the suspension itself has, so we, we call DB11 our GT car, we call uh -huh. Vantage, which you've had experience with both uh -huh. cars now, is our sports car, and this is our Super GT car, so it's a DB11 on one. Sure, um, yeah. <laughs> so, so basically the Super GT car in terms of dynamic character sits smack between a DB11 and a Vantage. So yeah. in terms of the increase in spring stiffness, the increase in anti roll bar stiffness uh -huh. is not as extreme as Vantage, uh -huh. but it's, uh, it's, it's more extreme than DB11. This is basically our brief for the car was to create something that's more engaging to drive than DB11. It's not to say DB11 is not engaging to sure. drive, this has just got more dynamic character about it. Quickly back on the topic of the gearbox, have shift speeds increased? No, so shift speeds are um, comparable or as, okay. as, as equal to the, yeah. to the Vantage, so it's shifting gear as okay, fast cool. as it can for this type of technology. Yeah. Downforce though, again, quite a step on from DB11. Run us through that. Yeah, so in terms of, you know, you can't create a car, so some of the vehicle performance stats of this car, just run through those and then sure. that will explain why we need this level yeah, yeah. of downforce. So VMAX is 211 miles per hour. Okay. Zero to 60 is 3.3 3 seconds. Zero to 100 miles per hour is 6.4 seconds. Wow. Incredibly okay. fast. Not hanging around. Because of the amount of torque the car has as well, there's the in-gear performance in fourth gear from 50 to 100 miles per hour is 4.2 seconds. Okay. Our data tells us that a Ferrari F12 takes 5.2 seconds. Wow. So the level of performance we get is, 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 is pretty incredible. Now obviously with that level of performance, that level of vehicle performance, you need a high level of downforce to pin the car to the ground. DB11 has around 20 kilos of rear downforce and it has a small amount of front lift. This car has 180 kilos of overall downforce, 120 at the back and 60 kilos at the front. So a substantial change there. Yeah. And, and how we achieve that is if you look at the, mm -hmm. the kind of the design of the car, it's a very um, kind of evocative design, it's a very muscular design, and it's, it's, it's four-man function. So the form, so into these nostrils here, mm -hmm. they're there because we need the cooling. You know, the big mass we have on sure. the front of the car yeah. is there because we need the cooling. If you talk about the aerodynamics, we have a fairly big splitter on the front. We have CCB brakes, so mm -hmm. the CCB brakes, which you have driven on the Vantage in Portimao circuit yeah. when you yeah, reviewed yeah. that car. We use the carryover brakes from that car. And we have to 
feed a lot of air to cool the engine, but also have to feed a lot of air to cool the brakes as well, again, right. yeah. because of the level of performance of the car. So are those elements as well, which have been changed and upgraded, like larger so cooling? This, so larger cooling, so yeah, yeah so, so we've about had to add auxiliary, auxiliary radiators to the front of the car, because right. yeah. if you have more power, more torque, you have more heat you need to reject, yeah. therefore you need more cooling capacity. Uh, theory, rack ratio similar, more so, weight or anything like so that? So in terms of the steering ratio, it's exactly the same as DV11 and Vantage, okay. although Vantage is slightly quicker because you have a shorter wheelbase. wheelbase. So but in terms of if you compare this to DB11, it's exactly the same steering ratio. You get a feeling of a faster steering ratio because the roll angle of this car is less sure. than a DB11 is. It means the kinematics on the front of the car, you're yeah. getting less toe out in, as the wheel goes into bump, which means that the steering is much faster in response. Fabulous. So let's walk around the back. We're going to show you um, a Another unique feature on this car, which is the wing that is uh, fixed. So in terms of, um, so DB11 used what we call aero, aero blade. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it feeds air, so it starts at the front of the car, mm -hmm. and all of the CFD analysis has been done to basically remove um, high pressure from the wheel arches. It blows air down the side of the car. Even the um, wing mirror um, uh, supports are designed through CFD to feed this C-pillar air. So the, oh, this is like an aero exhaust? It's like an air right. exhaust, so yeah. what it does is effectively it spits air up to about a metre above the height of the car okay. and then it reattaches with the airflow coming off the diffuser as well. So what we managed to achieve with this car is a significant increase in downforce but for exactly the same drag. So we Very haven't cool. increased drag, we've just nice. increased the downforce dramatically. Fabulous. So while we're at the uh, business end, talk us through the exhaust because I've noticed we've got quad pipes now. So obviously to release, so the engine hardware itself is the same, we've just recalibrated the engine to achieve the power, but we needed more and more free flow and exhaust. What that helps us with is, um, from a design point of view, quad exhaust look cooler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but also what we needed is, um, with every Aston Martin has to look great, drive great, and sound great. And what the quad exhaust allows us to do is, is add about 10 dB in terms of overall sound um, level. Wow. Yes, across. Um, we've, we've added it around from 2,000 to 5,000, which is exactly where the torque curve fits. Cool. So it has more order content, more frequency content, uh -huh. and more sound level. And it has to be quality sound level, sure. not just noise, but it has to be um, noise of, a, 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 of, of the equivalent or the correct sound level, uh, of quality. Sure. So and when... it does big skids. <laughs> See, so, so four things you've mentioned, which I think is what summarizes this brand. Looks good, sounds good, drives good, yeah. skids good. Skids good. Yeah. That's it. That's the formula for uh, the future of Aston Martin these days. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to drive it. Yeah. Fantastic, man. Brilliant, thanks. Okay, as mentioned, we've just been talking with Matt Becker about why it drives so well. Now we're here with Miles Nuremberger from Aston Martin to tell us why it looks so good. First thing to do, we talk about one of the big things that we do at Aston Martin Design that's different. We don't talk about, we don't have Russian dolls, so sure. the, it's all about the character of the car. So this is what we call our rogue, our brute in a suit, and that really, sure. that's what drives all the aesthetic behind the car. So DB11 is our gentleman, Vantage is our hunter, nose low to the ground, and this is our rogue. So when I say brute in a suit, it is quite literal. If you imagine these are the creases in your suit, and these are your muscles. So it is like oh, cool. we're, okay. we're literally putting it in there. There's sure. this muscle breaking out from the suit. And obviously in this colour, actually, it really tells, <laughs> it that, really it does, really tells yeah. that story quite well. <laughs> At the front of the car, we've got like the biggest grill. I was going to say, that grill, I mean, <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, this is the first I've heard or seen of this car. I uh, walked in and that grill almost consumed my head. Like yeah. it's so huge. Uh, Aesthetically awesome, practically, Pract lots of airflow. Practically, yeah. lots of airflow. So with the engine we've got in here, the power and the torque delivery we have, basically the requirements for airflow are, you know, it is practically the front of the car. <laughs> it really is. Um, so we have all of that. It obviously gives it a certain character as well, menacing character. You've got this real full width yeah. sort of uh, strength across there. And obviously when you get to the bonnet, you need to get that, all that air that goes in, you've got to get out. So a lot of it goes under the car and is managed um, very cleverly through that to get the downforce. But it also has these 
you know, heavy breathing nostrils on, on the... Menacing, I guess. Menacing. I bet when you start sketching the lines on this, you're yeah. like, this is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's to do that, it's supposed to be menacing. Yeah. So the, it's, the bad, it's the bad boy of the bunch. Yeah. Um, you know, so many of the rules that we put into DB11, this one purposely breaks. Sure, um, fantastic. In, in every aspect. And obviously we get a lot of things like this as well. Uh -huh. So we get um, nice. a super Legera badge. Very cool. Um, two reasons for doing that one. It just so looks, looks wicked. <laughs> <laughs> There's looks nothing wrong for making it look awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It looks awesome, yeah, but it also, yeah. in the old days, it used to denote the type of lightweight construction that we used to use oh, on the cars. Today, the lightweight construction we use is carbon fibre. So um, it was a great way to bring back a beautiful, yeah. beautiful badge. And obviously, proudly there on the bonnet. Awesome. Uh, Fabulous. Next to that. So, so that's the front of the car. The front, I mean. <laughs> The front, I could look at it for hours. I mean, if there's one thing, you know, Aston Martin have always been synonymous with, it's making stuff look amazing. So uh, that's ticked that box. Now, what we've done, the side, massive vent here. Is, is this yeah, to allow air pressure? To yeah, so this the wheel? Got a lot of aero on this car hidden away, and we actually have the, we're very unusual in that we have the aero team base in the design studio. So any one time we've got about three of their guys in. Nice. So working. Okay. So this is a whole system. So there's a, there's an aero system that Matt might have talked about underneath the car. Uh -huh. This one on the surface, so all the high pressure area in here vents out, spins, yes. interacts with the bottom of this mirror and okay. fires into that vent there. Which then pops out from this like aero exhaust which you've got here. Yes. Which is super cool feature. <laughs> and that basically is like a blade of air yeah. that on this car is over a meter high out of the back of the car and it basically bends at high speed. So this car has um, no drag penalty over DB11 yeah. at all, but yeah. it has a significant 100 kilos more downforce at the rear. That step on. Yeah. And it looks so subtle, you would never believe it. To look at this and think yeah. you've got another 100 kilograms of downforce yeah. is madness. So it actually exceeds CT12. That's not just CT12. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has a wing on it like this. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you can, see, you can see the step chains that the yeah. company is making and how it integrates aero and how much it can get out of it because Obvious. you wouldn't say that sure Just look no awesome. absolutely not yeah uh, i can see straight away lots of use of carbon fiber yeah um is that is that a, again a mix of awesomeness and lightweightness <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly that and on this car we actually use um what we call black tinted carbon fiber so it gives it a much more subtle thing as you look across it it just appears yes. gloss black and then the carbon weave. Do you know what? Now you've said that, yeah. earlier on I looked at a panel and I was like, I'm sure that was carbon fiber. Yeah. Really. You know? yeah. It is cool. Um, um, remind me again of the name of this colour. This is Satin Xenon Grey. Satin Xenon Grey. Yeah. I'm not sure how it looks on camera. At certain angles here it looks like satin black and then over the back here where there's more spotlights on it, it's basically like sort of graphite yeah. silver. Yeah. Paint's fantastic and menacing. Like, yeah. to the Looks like it's made out of a solid piece of graphite. It really does, right? Like. Yeah. So yeah. the car's a bit wider as well, just to get that bit more stance. Mm -hmm. So it's 15 odd millimeters in the rear haunches. Okay. 10 or so in the in the front. So it just gives that punched, yeah, more punched look. And on the back, we have like with our more sporting cars, so Vantage and this, we've got this single graphic across the back, whereby. Vantage is more playful, this one's yes. a little bit more sort of like a sweeping, more sober vibe going on. Um, yeah. And, and quad exhaust. And quad exhaust. And, wh and why quad exhaust? Because they look really cool. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they look really cool. Um, and they make a great noise. Sounds. Yeah, really great noise. Um, and this, I mean, the job the guys, the sound engineers we have have done is, is brilliant. Um, um, yeah. it's, it's a natural thing with turbocharged engines to get that, that sure. sound quality. Yeah. is very difficult, but yeah. this, Absolutely wild. I mean, I've yeah. driven it on track as well, and it was it, already. I can't wait. Yeah, I cannot yeah. wait to drive it's, this it's thing. So it's so fun. It's so fun on track. So you've been working on it for about two years now. Yeah, roughly two years. When when this project came up, excited. I mean, working on the next DBS like that's huge. Yeah, the manual one, the previous generation manual one. Something about that car, I just think it's fabulous. When I saw the teaser of this online, I thought, no way. And now I'm here. Yeah, it's Check become it quite a famous car, really, that, yeah. particularly that manual one. And, and yeah. we've seen the values, yeah, the, the second hand values yeah, yeah. rise considerably. And, and you see them around, it's funny how many pop up around London all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah, it's yeah. a really cool car now. Iconic car. So, yeah, I think, you know, day one when we thought, you know, we knew that we were going to call this car DBS very, very early on, it was, you know, that taking that 
as I said, it's, it's this fun bit of almost taking everything that DB11 stands for and just being a bit cheeky, breaking the rules, yeah. pumping it up that bit more, giving it more power, more downforce, more this. Um, this is always a hard question, but anything that you're the most proud of or excited about? I, it, it's off the, the grill. <laughs> It's a grill. It's the grill. It's, it's the grill, and yeah. you know um, when you see the prototypes uh, that's testing on the on the back roads around Gaydon, when one comes t towards you, it has a certain <laughs> element of authority about I'm sure it, it does. Yeah. and it almost makes you the first time you see one, it almost makes you sit up and you see yeah, it in the car. Like, like oh, yeah, oh, what is this? Like that. So I think you know, way. it's always fun to uh, evoke those emotions. Yeah, so super cool. Well. I believe I'm having the grace and fortune to drive one of these soon, which will be very cool. Uh, thanks for your time, mate. No worries. Really, congratulations on a great job. Uh, aesthetically nailed, as they say. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Great to hear. Thank well, you. Cheers. That's it. So there you have it. I'm now sat in the interior of the all-new Aston Martin DBS. Never did I believe those words would be coming out of my mouth again. It never actually crossed my mind that Aston might relaunch the DBS. I just thought it was the Vanquish and then something else. But here we are. And for me, I've always had a very special place for the original DBS and still is to this day one of my favorite Aston Martins. So to sit in the new one and bring it to you guys firsthand is an absolute honor. I kid you not when I say I had about three days notice to come and film this. Um, I had no idea it was happening. So I made my way into central London to come and bring it to you guys firsthand. If the video isn't doing the sculpture on this thing justice, which I really hope it is, let me tell you, I cannot wait for you guys to see one of these in reality. Aston have done it again. The sculpture is out of this world. Obviously can't give you driving impressions until a few weeks time, but yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that this is going to be a very special road car. Uh, questions below. I'm going to eventually interact with this car for real on a road when it's rolling. Uh, give me your questions below in the comments because I'll try and find out as much as I can for you. But uh, yeah, that is basically just a quick preview of the new DBS. Um, oh, while I'm in here, I forgot to mention, uh, they have also created some new sports seats for this car as well, which look very nice, and they have slightly higher side bolsters, which I imagine will provide more lateral support. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ciao!